right, well I'm almost here. Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest, and on this episode, I actually, I actually wanna talk about brake problems Turn right because, because this is actually the second time I'm coming out to do brakes on this vehicle. Uh, that's where there's a bit of like hard, hard area where I work when people don't wanna pay for a diagnosis. They just tell you to replace a certain part. Um, you know, it charge, it costs more for a diagnosis, so you know, I could charge somebody to replace the part and I tell them beforehand, or I can do a diagnosis and they could be, for sure, Most a lot of people take the risk. And uh, in this case, I didn't even talk to, I didn't even talk to them about what the issue was. The first time they just said they wanted new pads and the car was new enough that I was like, I'll pad slap it, I don't care. They didn't want rotors. Um, it's a 2017 Pilot and then Fast forward a couple months and they're like, hey, uh, can you do the rear brakes too? And I'm like, pads and rotors? And they're like, no, just pads, because it's shaking real bad. <laughs> and I was like, what? I'm like, bro, okay, that's your rotors. So we're gonna talk about how to like identify brake issues in this video. Uh, talk about like why you should, the best way to just do your brakes whenever you have to do them, why that includes usually replacing the rotors because of issues like this. Um, and yeah, we're gonna get in there and do a brake job. I don't film brake jobs often, but this one's gonna be a good learning experience, so let's get out there and do it. All right, anytime I have to take a wheel off, I bring my wheel lock kit. Luckily, they have their wheel lock. I'm not sure if I even have this specific lock in my kit, this weird one. It's pretty common, though. That's the thing about wheel locks is there's like a handful of different wheel locks, so if you have the key, it's just like heavy machinery one key fits them all, so it doesn't make much sense. shaking your car let's talk about it so when you do a brake pad replacement it's not really recommended to do just pads most shops and most sources will recommend doing rotors and pads every time but your rotors could be messed up in a few different ways So they could have cracks in them. That's one thing you wanna look for. And uh, these don't have cracks. That's why I wasn't too worried about doing pads last time. Sometimes you see little tiny heat cracks. Those aren't a big deal. Another thing you can get on rotors is some pitting. You can get like some grooves and stuff in them. I'll show you a picture on the screen. So if you see that, you're gonna have to replace your rotors if they look like they're not flat if they don't have a nice flat edge if there's like a lip on it right there if there's excess rust like just a bunch of rust then you're gonna need to do your rotors well let's talk about what you need to do when you do your pads at least okay just pads we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about brakes and grease together and those two things uh, don't really mix so you want to be careful anytime you're putting any sort of lubricant 
near your braking system because your brakes work by friction. So if you lubricate them, you're gonna lose braking power. But the braking system has to have lubrication in it to work. So we're gonna talk about the key points that you need to focus on lubricating. Because if you ignore them, you're gonna have issues. And I'll talk about the different issues. Uh, but you also can't over lubricate brake systems. It's a, there's a fine line. If you fail to lubricate your brake caliper after you replace your pads, your caliper could seize up and cause the pads to wear unevenly. I'll show you a picture of what that looks like. That can cause super fast premature wear on your brakes and cause that grooving pitting we were talking about earlier. So you'll just be servicing your brakes. They'll be making a bunch of noise. They'll start grinding sooner. They'll wear out. So that's behind these little rubber pieces here. There's two slide pins. I'll show you how easy it is to pull those out and check them and lubricate them. And uh, basically you don't want any sort of lubrication on the surface of this rotor. That's why we clean the new rotors when we take them out of the box. Also though, you wanna focus on lubricating key points of the brake pads so that they don't chirp or make noise whenever you apply your brakes or let off the brakes. So there's a few key points. We'll look at them closely here in a second. And that's, those are the things you want to focus on if you're just doing a pad swap. Which again, don't tell them Ernest recommended you. In this case, uh, the rotor has a set screw holding it in. That's for factory applications. And you can trust me, I used to work in a car factory at Nissan. So I understand the importance of having screws on there in an environment like the factory. But when we're replacing this rotor, we don't need to put that screw back in. This isn't going down an assembly line. It's not at risk of falling off and hurting somebody's toes. The tire is gonna go right back on here and hold it in place. So some people like to complain about that. And we'll look at the rust. Out here in Utah, we don't have much rust. Last time I did a brake job, there was a bunch of people talking about, oh, you wanna clean up the rust and put anti-seize behind the rotors here. Well, it depends on where you're at. If you're in a place that's prone to rust, that's a good idea. But if you're not, it really doesn't matter. Enough talking. That looks like a 17. Let's see if I guessed it right. Yep, that's a 17. Well, as I'm taking this top one out, sometimes I forget to check. Depending on the vehicle, if the hose is attached up here, it's usually hard to remove the caliper by just removing the top bolt. So I'll tighten that one down. In other words, it's almost always easier to take off the bottom bolt. And in most cases, that's the only way you can get it out with just one bolt. And I like to do that because that keeps you from mixing the two up. Okay, so you should just be able to take one bolt out of the back of the caliper like this. Again, if you do it on the bottom one, that's usually the best one. And then we'll slide it open like this. And then that pin stays inside the caliper bracket. And this pin comes with the caliper, so we need to pull this rubber boot off of that. And then we can flip this over so it's not hanging on the hose. Okay, and that makes sure that we cannot mix up these two slide pins. And you can see they're supposed to slide freely in there. If those don't have lubrication and they seize up, then you'll wear out your pads unevenly and prematurely. So I'll show you how to lubricate those. It's pretty simple. 
Okay, I'm gonna save these little spring clips. These help keep the pads off of the rotor when you're not applying the brakes. A newer technology, and that makes the pads last a little longer. And probably has a few other advantages. So we'll replace the hardware. If you have any sort of rust here behind the hardware, you're gonna to wanna to clean that up. Here, we're looking spotless. So a wire brush could do the trick on that, some uh, steel wool or Brillo pad or a little soft sandpaper, but be careful with sanding. Now the caliper comes off. All right, now before we grease these pins, let's take the caliper bracket itself off and there's just two bolts in the back holding that on. And we'll grease these up probably last thing, that way the grease is nice and clean actually. Okay, back here looking like a 19 or 21. Okay, so in the back you can use like an impact gun or something. There's plenty of space on this one. If you don't have one though, I like to just hit a wrench with a hammer. Just be careful for your fingers. You know you don't have any rust back here if you can take them out by hand. smack it with a hammer or maybe like put a extension for a socket on there that's about the same size as a screw and hit that really hard that can knock it loose it doesn't have the best track record in my experience so i like to use an impact driver these are only like 20 30 bucks at any auto parts store probably cheaper online i'll put a link in the description of these but just want to make sure it's going in the direction of off and then you just smack it that. A times, maybe. There. Weird angle on that one. Uh, when these get rusty, they get pretty tricky. I did bring a drill with some drill bits. Worst case scenario, you just drill off the head of the screw until it gets to the size of that hole and you pull the rubber off. If your rotors are a little rusty and they don't want to come off like that did, you can just give them some taps on the back with a heavy hammer and that'll pop them off usually. Sometimes the taps have to get kind of hard, but if you're replacing the rotor, you can smack on that thing as hard as you want. That's what I was talking about with not really having an issue with rust behind the rotor. So you can see the mounting surface is nice and clean there. No scale or anything built up, so it's okay to put a new rotor right back on that. So we could break this down a couple of ways. If your rotor looks questionable, replace it. And the rotor, the issues that are caused by the rotor mostly are wobbling and shaking. You'll feel it in the steering wheel and in the brake pedal when you're applying the brake. So if you have that, then you're gonna wanna replace your rotor. Here's my famous trick for cleaning the rotors. Put it on backwards first, clean this side, and then flip it around. Actually, I'm just noting these little threaded holes right here. I have used these before to pop a rotor off. I think maybe a rotor that wouldn't come off with a hammer I was hitting super hard. So if you get a couple of bolts and you run them down these holes and just crank them down tight and then hit it again, that'll put some extra pressure on it just like a press or a vise. Uh, they don't really have another purpose that I'm aware of. Let me know in the comments down below what these little threaded holes are for. But 
as you can see there is no reason for them behind the rotor here okay so we just have to put this back together then <clears throat> and clean up these pins okay when you're putting these back on hit the hammer about as many times as you hit it to take it off Again, clean this up if there's any rust here. If not, then put the new hardware on from your brake kit. Oh, we've got new spring pins as well, so I can throw those away. Okay, now while I'm putting this back together, finishing it up, let me tell you about the last thing I could think of um, braking issue-wise that you might need to know about. If you feel like your brake pedal is vibrating, Whenever you press your brakes, your ABS light's probably on. That's probably an ABS issue. Whenever you feel that vibration, the fast one, the in your brake pedal. That's the ABS actuator misreading your wheel sensor. It might think that one of your wheels is sliding because the ABS, what it does, when your wheels are sliding and they're turned, you go straight. So the ABS, when it notices that you're sliding and your wheels are turned, it pulsates the brake system like that. That way your wheels gain traction and your vehicle moves in the direction your wheels are turned. So on old vehicles like my Ranger and older that don't have ABS, they're a bit dang more dangerous to ride in bad weather. But if you notice that vibrating, it's an ABS issue. You might have like your tone ring in the back has a bunch of magnets inside of it. You might have an issue. You usually have to replace the wheel bearing, bearing for that or it might be your ABS sensor. And that wire is on the side right here. It just goes right behind and it's usually only held in with one little 10 millimeter bolt or something like that. Sometimes when it's rusty, that can be tricky to remove, so. And then on some brake hardware, they're not even. You can see this little retaining clip right there isn't present on this one. So one of them goes on the top and one goes on the bottom. Another earnest trick is over my lifetime of having replaced brakes on vehicles, I've noticed that most of them come with one brake pad for each side that has this little noise making clip here that lets you know when your brakes are getting low. I know there's a lot of arguments for trailing leading side, whatever way you want to have that clip on. My trick is though, I've noticed that almost always, I think every single, unless there's like a seized pin or something, almost always when the brakes function normally, the rear brake pad always wears out a little bit faster than the outside one. If you have four caliper pistons, if you have four piston calipers, then they'll wear out evenly, but because the pistons for the calipers are on the back side, the pad on that side wears out a little bit faster. So I put the noise making shim on the back side for two reasons, because it wears out faster and because you can't look and see how thick the pad is on the backside easily because of the way the tire covers it. But you can look and see how thick the pad is on the front side. So that gives you two different ways to know when your pads are wearing out. The one that's wearing out faster has the noise maker. So if you're looking here and you think, oh, I've got a little bit of pad left, the one in the back might be worn out a little bit more. It'll start making noise first. Okay. So then when we get to our pads, there's a few points we want to focus on lubricating. The points that basically contact the surfaces right here, not the brake rotor. And on the back where it contacts the caliper as well is a good place to lubricate. I like to use silicone lubricant because it's a pretty good lubricant, but they make special brake lubricant. So either or. So 
So here's what that looks like. You don't want to touch the front of a brake pad and you especially don't want to get any sort of oil or lubricant on that. See what I mean? Only two of the pads have that noise making shim, so I just want to go in the front like that. And then another issue that's common with people who aren't familiar with the replacing brakes sometimes do is put the pad on backwards like that. So just make sure that your pads are always touching the rotor. Okay, now finally we can talk about how easy it is to lubricate these slide pins. You just pull the rubber off of the slide pin, not off of the caliper. Once you pull that out, you take your rag and clean it off and you lubricate it up. Easy peasy, but if you skip this step, this can cause some of the most damage to a braking system right here. chunk of grease in there that will keep it lubricated for a long time. I like to make sure it's on everything when I put it in, give it a little twist. When I do it up there, I twist it back and forth like that a few times as I put it on and it'll be good to go. I forgot to show putting these little clips on. I almost always put the caliper on first, start putting the screw in and then remember. I hardly ever remember to put these on first. As soon as you remember about these though, is the easiest time to stop. Go back and put them in. Uh, they're in there though. You've probably seen before I put this tire on. I don't lie. Let's see if you can see them in there. Call me all honest earnest for a reason. Anyways, welcome for picking this tire up again. Oh, uh, make sure you're subscribed. And let's do the other side. Oh, the other thing though, you want to make sure you always pump your brakes before driving off. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to get to your first stop and realize the brakes aren't working like you expected. So, you shouldn't hear any grinding. If you think a part doesn't look like it's the same size, compare it to the one you took off. Everything should be an exact match. If something doesn't look right, it's probably not. were for nah that's not very worn out i think the caliper i just pushed it in further than i needed to that's right because there's a bit of space anyways tighten these up and on to the other side and i got 120 foot pounds down pretty good so i don't use my torque wrench to tighten up lug nuts
some cases, like on this side, it's definitely best not to reuse this screw after you've taken it out. Most of the time it gets pretty beat up. See what I mean? Every time I just put that cover back on and then remember these, no big deal. Well, that's it. Hopefully this video was interesting and hopefully I hit everything that's common to go wrong with brakes like your braking system. So hopefully this is a helpful video. If it was, make sure you're subscribed. And if I miss something or there's something that you think belongs in this video, let me know in the comments down below. Or let me know what you think if you liked it. If you want to buy me a warm drink or something, you can donate at the links in the description. It means the most if you're subscribed and you leave this video a thumbs up and check out the next video up here. I'll see you there. That's a job well done.